so he, he was basically out there, um, Jerry Conway, out there, and he's written some great books, uh, comic book writer, legend. And um, and so he's he's basically going on about how teenage boys didn't go out to watch this. And I said to him, you know, I posted back saying, it's an R18 movie, but who in their right mind would send their teenage boys to it if it's an R18 movie? And not only that, teenage girls to it as well. So you're forgetting the teenage girls who love Harlequin, right? Harlequin basically came out in the Batman animated series in a full costume, all right? A full costume, head to face, totally covered in the black and um, black and red, sorry, white and red um, jester costume, Harlequin, right? And, of, and of, also, Harlequin is an amazing character, if you really think about it. Um, she was... Um, she was a therapist um, who, you know, who was um, uh, providing psychology to um, looking after um, Joker. He basically played head games with her and got her basically twisted in the head. And she basically went over her to the dark side. And basically, this movie is basically about two villains. And I, I don't understand how they can say, well, it's a superhero movie. It's basically two villains who have no powers, right? So it's, it's a comic book movie like Joker, but with two villains main characters are two villains so how do you how do you then try to promote two villains there's no sort of uh redeeming factor if you're gonna just go villains going off at each other who are killing people for the sake of killing people because they have problems in their lives um black mask in this movie is supposed to be, uh, you know uh comes from a very bad home situation gets into criminal uh becomes a criminal and hates um harlequin for whatever reason He's supposed to be a man hater. I mean, female, you know, woman hater. So you've got someone who hates men and someone who hates women. So you've got two very horrible people uh, with horrible parts going at each other in a movie that has basically has no redeeming factors. All right. So if you really think about it, that's where it's at. So you can't make a movie about two villains. Joker was just one villain, but then Joker obviously played. You know, was talking about social things about a mental person, right? Uh, not a mental person, a person with mental issues because of his own bad background and violent, horrible background, right? And so, but there wasn't two p villains in it. So there was, you know, so then you've got, you know, basically you got a small amount of um, uh, birds of prey people in there, which aren't really birds of prey because they don't look like the characters. So that turns up the audience as well. Because if you don't have characters that represent um, that are represented in the comic books that actually look like the comic book characters, how are you supposed to actually connect with that? So that turned off the other audience. So not only do you have like um, you know dark skinned people going, "Hey, this isn't this is not right," race swapping, then you had like man going, "This isn't right," like bashing us over the head with you know misogyny and all this bad bad things. And not only that, then you had the third thing these characters don't look like them so you basically decided to just totally ruin the movie ruin the movie for the audience before they even bought the ticket but then then you went away and started promoting with negativity positive things get you you know if you positively promote something and are happy about what you're doing people will, be, will buy into that but if you start going off in a negative way about it people won't be into that um you know, you can write a really horrible, horrible uh, story with positive outcomes. But we have so many amazing uh, entertainment out there, gaming, you know, um, books, novels, graphic novels, um, movies, and so on. And we have so many great entertainment authors and entertainers out there who are amazing. I'm excited that um, Joker has uh, won an Oscar. Joaquin Phoenix won an Oscar. And that's great because it's the first time that a an actor for a comic book based movie has won an Oscar as a best actor, and that that really shows how um, there's respect now given to creators of comic books and to comic books itself itself. Because in the past, um, here we go. And in the past few years, I mean decades, uh, comic books especially were so rubbished. In the entertainment industry nobody wanted to touch comic books and then when they realized that there could be money made in it that's when people start hey bud here we go that then people 
see when it comes to Hollywood it doesn't matter about skin color it doesn't matter about sexuality it doesn't matter anything but money and and like I said I've studied filmmaking right I've got a degree in it a uh, bachelor's so it's got nothing to do with nothing but money if it's gonna get bombs on seats as they say that's what they'll put out there it doesn't matter if my skin color is brown or white or green or yellow if it sells the tickets they'll do that they'll put them in there to do that and that's why some the hypocrisy is is real right that's why I just think it's just a big joke when it comes to these guys who go off on about men who go off about women children you know that's why I got really pissed off by the teenage boys thing and the other thing is guys everybody you know if, if and here's the thing Jerry Conway was going about tits and ass oh it's because it wasn't hypersexualized it's like you're so out of touch with reality you know Jerry because at the end of the day every kid has a teenager has a cell phone and they could just google the damn thing right if if if, if I want to see tits and ass in my movies I'll just go parody just boom and it's there and this is the reality of these people they don't, they're so out of touch when it comes to normal people and that they live in such a bubble that they don't understand that people don't want to be preached to i don't want to preach to i don't want to preach at my audience who's reading my comic book i just want to tell a story if they like it they like it if they don't they don't that's fine but i don't want to be preached to and so you know um, myself and my bud um we're you know we're gonna go see a movie tonight all right we were gonna see Halloween. I wasn't going to then he talked me into it and I said okay cool we'll go see it and then I see this thing from Jerry and I'm like I ain't wasting ten dollars fifteen dollars on a movie that doesn't want me to see it especially when you got these guys out there telling me I shouldn't be seeing it that I'm a bad person for for watching it or I'm a bad person in general because of my gender next thing they'll talk about my sexuality next thing they'll talk about my my you know race whatever ethnicity right this, so the whole thing's a joke you can't trust Hollywood because it's all about money at the end of the day just tell a good story that's why Joker made a billion dollars that's why freaking Deadpool made 500 million dollars of a 50 million dollar um, movie oh, was it 46 56 yeah 56 I think it was nobody actually believed that R18 movie could do it so they're saying this is a hard Harlequin's a hard hard R18 movie Yet, Deadpool was had R18. Spawn was a had R18 movie. So for, they were saying this is the first, and this is the other thing I, was, I forgot to mention um, that I was going to post about last week about these guys talking about an R18 movie. Spawn was an R18 movie. Uh, the Crow, way back in the nineties, was a had 18 movie, R18 movie. Right. So and there's several others blade was pretty full on chopping off heads and all that and you've got tomb raider they're forgetting see they play this game about gender they forget that tomb raider a franchise a female lead right every time they put a new movie out it's all about gender and race ethnicity i'm just being titled being tokenized <laughs> Um, and this array stopping things is just a joke now uh and diversity is a joke now because it's just a buzzword because one of the things i think about whenever they do this is um is a song by public enemy called burn hollywood burn came out about 88 89 if i remember right and i listened to it way back then right i was probably about 16 17 and I, I listened to the song and I was looking, reading the lyrics because I love lyrics. And, and, um, and that's what inspires me when I listen to music, metal and rap are basically dear to my heart because I grew up with it as a kid. As soon as I got into metal, I was right there next to it with um, Public Enemy. Megadeth, Public Enemy. That hardcore. Um, and so, you know, and also Iron Maiden. The lyrics are amazing. So if you really want to talk about Hollywood go back 20 years is it 20 years 30 years and listen to the lyrics of public enemies burn Hollywood burn they talk about tokenism 30 years ago and you'll realize that that these guys were the way um 
Chuck D and uh, Flavor Flav were talking about it, will just show you how hip hypocritical Hollywood is when it comes about when when it comes to diversity. And sadly, thirty years later, they still haven't listened. They still tokenize. They still race swap. They still put you in a second grade um, role. So if they really wanted to make this about um, about birds of prey, then put the birds of prey characters in, right? So as as you saw the post earlier, uh, Clownfish TV uh, noted, uh, reported on that they've going to call it Harlequin because birds of prey isn't <laughs> isn't a big factor of it, and it's all about Harlequin. So why not just call it Harlequin? So yeah, the marketing team on this did a joke of a uh, marketing. They should have just told um, told uh, actors just to just say good things with the movie, say you on bums on seats, say how hard you work, how good the movie is, and just get people out, and not do a a you know a blatant clickbait abusive attack on people on your audience. It's not going to sell tickets. It never does, and then when it doesn't, then you start the blame game.